All right, ladies and gentlemen. Well, we're trying to get some new audio going here. I apologize. Trying to see if we can fix those settings on the fly. We'll see what we can do. And this is great. I'm getting a lot of webinar chat saying the sound is good now. And that seems to be interesting because I've uh, turned off all microphones. So you're just hearing me picked up through the laptop. Hopefully that's fine. Everybody seems to say it sounds clear. So we'll roll with that for today. Thank you, everybody. Whew, that's a good way to start this month. Fantastic. But thank you, everybody, for chiming in and letting me know. Not sure why we were having some microphone trouble there, but we got it rolling now. Okay. Well, now that we've got that out of the way and everybody's had a chance to file in, let's uh, hit some of these housekeeping topics really quickly because as always, we've got plenty of uh, content to get through this month. So first things first, we are recording this presentation, including this early little hiccup here. It'll be great to listen to later. Uh, so this will be made available on our Training Academy page, really now that new section of the new Support Center. Uh, and because of that, and because the hope is to get good audio, everyone has been muted. Uh, if you do have questions, I know everybody has been using the chat to send in some notes on the audio. Thank you for that. Uh, if you do have questions, please go ahead and use that Q&A box if you can. That's the best way to send those in. As questions come up, if they're top of mind, just go ahead and drop those in. We'll hold those questions till we get close to the end of the session here, but that way you can capture those again as they come up. If you've got a question, odds are someone else has that question too. Okay. All right. So for those of you who do not know who I am, my name is Scott Richards. I'm the Director of Training and Education here at Virtuous. Always excited to get to chat with you, uh, especially this month. I feel like there's a lot of folks. We've got a pretty a pretty timely topic here in terms of one of our newer features that we wanted to take a look at. And so to go over the agenda for today, as always, we do want to start by taking a quick look at some of the latest and greatest features. Uh, we just had another release, so we'll look at some of the expanded views for tasks. I want to take a quick look at the overflow integration and, and give you an idea of what that does. All those of you who are using virtuous giving, Overflow can really help give you another avenue to receive online gifts. And uh, not to perk my own pot or you know all of our pot here, but we do want to take a quick look at the new support page too, uh, which is really designed to make it easier to help you find the help content that you need. And then we'll dive into some of our featured content around reports, including I know that I've talked to some people about making the decision, when do I use a custom report versus building a query? Why would I do that? Uh, how do I make that choice? So we'll talk a little bit about that and then we'll dive into the report builder and even managing reports and how you can deploy some of these things for other members of your team in a few different ways. Uh, and then as always, we'll wrap up with our Q&A and then we will, at least for everybody stateside, say happy Thanksgiving uh, for another month here. Okay. So first off, like I said, we do want to take a look at those latest developments. And the first thing I mentioned is the new tasks view. So let's slide on over here into Virtuous. This is something that I'll bet a, a bunch of you on the call are all saying, man, that I asked for that. We've had a lot of folks ask about this for task management. And it, it just was something that we had to make sure that we were doing in the right way. So it's taking a little bit. But um, now if you go to the tasks screen, now this is very important. It's on the task screen. So not the, the little tasks widget that appears on your dashboard, right? But over here, you can see I've got 254 tasks. That's what happens when all these are fake tasks. Um, but over here, we've still got some of the same tabs that already existed. So we've got, you know, my tasks to show you everything that you have on your plate, everything you have that's past due and that's resolved. Those have stayed the same. The only big difference is uh, some of the icons have changed. So for resolved tasks, you'll see the little check mark to tell you it's done. Anything past due, you see the little calendar icon there. Uh, and then the big addition is the ability to see tasks that are assigned to the team. This means any tasks that you have created and assigned to another user. So everything here, these five pages of tasks, they've all been created by me 
and I've assigned them to other coworkers. Again, up until now, you had to go, let's say you created a task <clears throat> and it was to uh, call, you know, a, a contact, call Bob Jones. If you wanted to know if that task had been completed, you would have to go to Bob Jones contact record and take a look at tasks and take a look at notes and see if it had been done. Now, once you've assigned that task to someone else, you can come on in here and you can take a look and you can see all the tasks that you've assigned out, right? They're gonna be in order, in chronological order, and you can see if they were done or not. And over here, you can see it tells me when it was resolved as well. So I know the due date, I know when it was completed. Now beyond this, there's also this new All Tasks tab, and it's very similar to the query tool in the All Queries tab. It's all of them, everything. And here, we've added in a filter. So if you want to get more specific, let's say I've got a lot of tasks I've assigned out to my team, and I wanna specifically look at one particular user, I could come in here, and then I could say that the created by is me, and I can say that the assigned user is Fozzie Bear. Fozzie Bear, notoriously behind on his tasks. And I can see that I've created 28 tasks for Fozzie, and here's the status of all of them. If I wanted to get a little bit more specific, I could look at the due date. Hey, let me look at everything that I've assigned uh, for Fozzie to be done you know, in the last 90 days, for example. Has he completed those tasks? So if you are going through the assigned to team tab and you think, well, I really want to zero in on some specific tasks or in a specific user, the all tasks tab is probably going to give you the best way to be able to do that. Okay. So I wanted to highlight that again, that's been a pretty popular request. So I have a feeling that'll be a big deal, at least to some of you to be able to get that visibility there. Couple of the other new features though that I wanted to highlight before uh, we jump in and I wanna make sure we have plenty of time to chat through reports. Uh, but one of them is Overflow. And, and Overflow is a service that allows you to receive gifts of stock through a donation form, right? You'd have to hook up your own brokerage account, um, but that way someone could go to your website, they could go to your donation form and instead of pulling out their credit card, they could actually donate stock just as easily, right? Uh, and so this is for anyone who is using virtuous giving. And I've got this set up over here in a different environment where I happen to have giving and everything enabled. And right over here, I've set up Overflow. Now the setup for Overflow is actually very easy, right? You can go into uh, settings, whoops, using that new navigation over here right, you can go to connectivity, and right there you can click on overflow stock donations, and you can complete the form. It's just all the information for your organization there to start that process. The team at Overflow will reach out to you then. They'll complete the setup. They'll walk you through all of that. Once I've done that, when I go to create a new giving form, so let's say I'm going to create a new giving form, and this is going to be for my um, stock giving um, and more, I can still set the default project and segment all the same settings as before. And when I come in here, when I go to set up this form, I'll see that double the donation has been added already because I have double the donation integration. So that's been dropped into the top of the form for me. I could keep it there. I could move it around, right? I could do whatever I want to do with that. Uh, so for example, maybe I think, you know, this would be better suited if I took it and I put it right down here. Someone's already made the decision to give, and now I want them to remember to double check, see if they can get a matching gift. And then I can scroll over here on the left. So here's all the fields that I can drag in, right? And you can search. Obviously, there's the search at the top. But if you scroll down, there's a section here for plugins. And right under plugins, you can see that there's the button for overflow. And so I could take overflow and I could drop that in and I could put it right here with uh, the credit card number. There we go. Now, in addition to that, maybe I also want to give people the ability to pay with their bank account, right? I could do all three on this one form if I wanted to. I could get crazy here. 
as I add these in, if I go up here and I generate my preview, then you're going to see my form looks pretty much the same right now. It's set up for giving via credit card, right? Uh, but then I could say, you know, actually, I want to give with my bank account, I'll have me log into my bank, or I want to make a stock donation, that'll have me go ahead and log into my brokerage account and give stock. So you could present all three options. You could present one or two. You could really set that up the way that you want, okay? But that overflow option really is gonna make it a lot easier to get some of those gifts. And I mean, there are a ton of donors out there who, uh, who donate, but, but don't donate stock. And a lot of that's because it's, it's, it's not easy. <laughs> There's a lot of steps. There's a lot of forms, a lot of paperwork involved. And so the idea here is to make that a lot easier on the donor and easier on you. Uh, if you do have questions about that, if you haven't set it up already, you can always reach out to our support team. They can give you some guidance on that and try to point you in the right direction. And speaking of our support team, what a great segue. I did want to just quickly point out one of the other new features is our new help page. So we go up here to the little mortarboard hat and we click on support. That'll take you into this new help screen. So we used to have all of our content kind of all lined up in a big column. You could dig through for a while to try to find something. We wanted to make it easier to try to find what you need. So you can jump into different sections here. If you're looking for help with automation, if you're looking for something that's giving related, you can jump right in. Or you can still use the search bar up here to try to find what you need. So if you wanted to know more about overflow, for example, hey, there's that overflow integration article. And then you can jump right into that. Okay, and then even from here, you can navigate in between sections or in between articles in this particular section. Pretty simple. Okay, so like I said, just a few of the quick highlights, at least from our recent release. As you guys know, we push out releases every four weeks. We do not stand still. We are, it's not in our DNA, it's just not how we roll. Okay. Uh, but I do want to dive into some of our featured content, which is still a relatively new feature, as a matter of fact. Uh, custom reports were included in our last two releases. This was kind of released in waves, right? The first wave was simply the ability to build custom reports in Virtuous, and then we added some more functionality to that. And so if some of you maybe checked this out after the first release, the first wave, and then you didn't go back after the most recent release, there may be things that you've missed that are there now. So I want to make sure everybody can get a view of this. Now, one thing I should note is that I know some clients have some custom reports that have been contracted and built, right, through a plugin in Virtuous. Uh, we're not addressing that particular plugin right now, okay, that particular data plugin. Um, what we're looking at is the ability to actually build custom reports. There's a report builder now right in Virtuous. Um, and so this is outside of that structure, right? That structure required you to be able to write SQL. That's why most of them were contracted to be built. And so that's an entirely separate feature and functionality. And some of you who are on the session today may have that deployed in your system right now. That's not uh, uh, the same as the feature that we're talking about here with custom reports. And those of you that are using some of those, you'll see the difference right away as we jump in. Okay. And just a reminder, if you do have questions as we're going through, please do just toss them into the Q&A box. I'll make sure that uh, I'm keeping an eye there and we'll address those as we get to the end of the session. But as we start to talk about custom reports and we talk about custom reports uh, specifically in Virtuous, as I mentioned, there are some folks that, that I've talked to who have questions about, you know, well, well, why do I create a custom report? You know, if you think about all the different ways you have uh, to pull data out of the system or to aggregate it, you've got the ability to build a filter, right? You can go to the contacts page and filter for certain contacts, even use the map to filter for a certain group of contacts pretty, pretty easily. You can go ahead and build a query. And with queries, obviously you can get much more complex. You can use nested queries, you can use or statements. You can do a lot more with the query tool. And the query tool really is, and we've said this in these sessions before, 
It really is asking a question of the database. I want to see all the records that dot, 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 right? I want to see all the contacts whose life to date plus pass through giving is greater than a thousand dollars. I want to see all the gifts that have been designated to one of these five projects in the last 90 days, right? I'm asking a question and I'm getting the raw data. I'm getting the results back. That's the query tool. And then there are our standard reports. And those are, are really, you know, people call them canned reports. They're built right into the system. The criteria is pretty set and they all kind of have a clear purpose. They're all purpose built to do something specific. And those are all available, right, in the reports drop down on the dashboard. Now, in addition to those features, you've got this ability to create custom reports. So, so why do I do that as opposed to just building the query that I want and looking at the data? Well, remember, we just said, when you build a query, right, you're really asking a question of the database. Hey, I want to know uh, all the records, right, that, that match to this particular criteria, that, that match this um, that I'm building right now. But with a report, you know, I want to go beyond the raw data and I want to be able to see trends and I want to be able to see statistics. I don't want to have to pull my query out into a CSV and go into Excel and start to try to summarize some of this data for myself. I, I want to be able to see that on screen. That's where the line between query and report really is. The query is going to give you all the data, right? The report's gonna help me make sense of that data. This is how I can create clear visualizations, right? All your reports get a little chart up at the top so that instead of having to go through tables and tables and tables of you know, data, rows and rows of information, I can see really quickly, right, those trends. I can see those stats because I've got a, a really easy to digest bar chart that I can you know, even toss into a a slide deck, a PowerPoint, because I've got a report to my board. Okay. And in addition to doing that and reporting to my board and seeing that report, hey, I build that awesome bar chart. I built this really great pie chart that helps me at a glance digest some of what's happening in my database. Well, the one place where I want to see that, where I do want to quickly glance and, and be able to quickly digest some data is right on my dashboard. And so by using the custom report functionality. You can now go that extra step and say, hey, I would like to create my own custom dashboard widgets, right? Up until now, you've had that sort of set list of widgets that you could select from. And of course, everybody could arrange them differently. Within those widgets, you might set your time frame or a couple of parameters differently, but now you can really create your own widget to help you see just what you want to see. And we'll even see, we're gonna look at how you can do that to help you take that data and share it across your teams, right? So that I can go ahead, build that report if I want to, and then other users can leverage that on their own dashboard or even see that report, okay? And again, you know, it's the difference between if you had to send someone a query, you would just say, hey, here's an Excel spreadsheet with all the data in it. They're probably gonna say, great, well, what does this mean? You know, what does our average giving look like you know, over the last year? What's the, what's the average gift size? How are we trending? How are we looking? Oh, yeah, well, let me, let me massage that a little bit. Well, no, I wanna build a report and that'll actually show me that. Hey, here's how average gift size is trending over the last year. I got it right here, okay? Okay, so really, as we've said, your reporting and all these reports, they're gonna help you provide insights into your data beyond just a simple query, okay? So now, let's take a look at that custom report builder, shall we? There we go. Probably shouldn't whistle on a microphone. That probably didn't feel good to any of you. Sorry about that. I just had too much coffee today. That's kind of how I'm rolling right now. So if I wanted to get to reports, there's two ways to get there, okay? Uh, up until now, if you've been going ahead and you know, using some of the standard reports in the system, 
you're used to the little reports drop down in the upper right. That's still there. That's still how you get to the standard reports. And at the top, you can see your favorite reports or click view all. That'll take you to the reports screen. So you don't have to get into a new rhythm to get to reports. If you're used to going up and to the right, you can go up and to the right. Totally good. But we do have, remember, this cool new navigation over here for all the, the settings. What used to be the settings menu now is more tools. And from there, you can get right to reports. Okay, pretty straight shot. And here's my reports screen. So when this originally rolled out, there were only four types of reports that you could build. Right? You could build a report on a gift, on a gift ask, on a recurring gift, or on a pledge. And that was it. In the last go around, we've added in contact reports, right? Gift splits, which is actually a pretty big deal. Uh, we've added plan gifts and project reports. So you can see project trends over time as well. When you go to build a report, you'll have to select the report type. It's very similar to how you build a query. First thing you do is you select your query type and then you go. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and select my report type and then I'm going to build that. So gift splits, like I said, this one is really great. Okay, because remember, there's a difference between a gift and a gift split. And if you want to know what that difference is, there's no better place to see that than right on the gifts screen in Virtuous. You go to that gifts page, list all the gifts in your system, and the main tab is going to be the gifts tab. 6,444 gifts in this particular system. But I've got a separate tab for gift splits. So these are the gift splits by project. So you can see there are 5,133 of these. Now remember, every gift can be designated to a single project or it could be split among multiple projects. So that's the difference between a gift and a split. If someone gave a $100 gift and they said, hey, $50 here is going to go to your uh, children's education program and $50 is going to go to your uh, adults continuing education program. That's one gift, but with two splits. Okay. And when we want to report on project giving, we want to report on, on project data, gift splits are really what we want to look at there. I want to know that $50 went to my children's education project. I don't want to know about the $100. I want to know that $50 went to children's education. Those of you that have some users who are restricted by project, they're only allowed to see certain financials, they only see this tab on the gift screen. They can only see gift splits. Okay, That's, that's all they have permission to see because that's, that's the only kind of piece of the puzzle that applies to them. So when we first rolled out reports, you had all these gift reports and you could do some really cool things, gift size by month and everything else. But you couldn't report on projects, right? On project designations. Because again, gifts don't have projects. Gift splits have projects. So now I can build a gift split by project report. So let's go ahead and do that. Now I can create a new report from my big blue button up here and then just select from the drop down, or I can just click right here if I know I want to create a gift split report. That's going to take me into this wizard. Okay, and this little wizard or however you want to think of it, right? The report builder tool wizard, you insert your cool term here. Uh, this is going to walk you through these four stages or these four steps, okay? So first, I'm going to give this a name and select the type of graph that I want to build into my report. So let's call this one uh, Project Giving. Uh, let's focus on year to date. Project Giving YTD. Now, under here, I can choose to share this report to others. If I wanted to, I could build this report, be a super special secret report just for me. That's a choice. Right up front. Okay, I want to know, am I building this report to share it with my team? Am I building this report and it's only for me? By default, the report is shared because again, it's in our DNA. We've said this before. When Virtuous, it's in our DNA to make data available across the team, right? Everybody should be working towards the same goals and rowing in the same direction. 
So that's kind of how we approach things. But we know that in, there are cases when you want to build a super special secret report just for you. That's fine. You can uncheck that box. Okay. Once you've done that, you've done that. Okay. Once you've chosen that setting. And then down here, I can go ahead and let's do a bar chart for this one because I think that's going to look a little better than a line chart. A line chart's great for like, you know, uh, breakdowns by month so I can see a trend line, that kind of thing. Um, but here, I think a bar chart's going to be what we want. And we'll click next. And then I choose to group fields and how to summarize and aggregate my data. So for grouping fields, you can see there's a little uh, uh, preview drawing on here, right? And that shows you right here, whenever I draw the screen jumps, it's always good, um, shows you right there uh, what we're talking about when we're grouping. Hey, what's this going to be on the x-axis? What are you going to see across the bottom of your report? So we're building a bar chart. So hey, what are, what's each of those bars going to be? What is each bar going to represent? That's what I'm adding here when I'm grouping my fields. Okay. So I'm going to group my fields here. We already said I want project giving year to date, so I probably want to group it by project. Let's do that. Uh, project name, because project code, probably going to be a lot of uh, codes and gobbledygook stuff. Okay. So we'll say we're going to group these by project name. And then down here, I can choose how I want to summarize this. What's, what's the total going to be? So now we're talking about the left-hand side. So those bars, right, are set by the grouping. Now, well, hey, what are those bars going to represent? Well, what's the height of those going to be? Well, in this case, it's going to be the amount designated to each of those projects. Now, I could do this based on contact or pass-through contact. If I did contact, that's a great way for me to see, hey, how many donors have given to each project in whatever time frame I want to set. Okay, so that contact is a neat one if you want to look at you know, how many donors. You know, there's a difference, right? I might have a project that's raised a lot of money, but then I look at the contact count and all that money's coming from three contacts. I have another project that's raised a little bit less, but it's more evenly distributed, right? The dependency quotient on that project is a lot more healthy. Because in the first project scenario, I lose one of those donors, I'm gonna be in big trouble, okay? So here we're gonna stay with amount designated. I wanna base this on amount. And then you can choose how you want to aggregate this. And you can select up to three. You can have a couple of different choices here. These are what are going to give you the different color bars in your chart. Okay. So up here, it's going to be grouped by project name. And then down here, whatever function I choose, if I choose just one, and here I can do total. I just want to see the total number. Great. But I could say I want to see this based on total, on the average, and I want to see uh, the, the maximum for each one of these. So that'll give me three different color bars for each of those groupings. Okay, but I'm just going to stick with total for right now. I click next. Now this report will still give me raw data, still give me a table of data underneath that says, hey, here's everything feeding into your report. So this is where I can say what I want to see. What do I want there to be underneath of that? Well, maybe I want to see the, uh, the gift ID, right, and the date. And let's say the amount for sure, okay? And I mean, you can see you got a lot of fields here. I could even start to search. Sorry, I can't type. Um, I'll use my excuse of having a broken finger. How about that? There's pass-through contact. Let's go back up to the top. Ugh. Oh, well, we'll just stick with gifts. I had, let's do this, contact ID, contact name, and we'll leave it with that. So we'll do gift ID, gift date, amount, contact ID, contact name. I don't want you to see me here typing and searching forever, but I can type ahead and search for whichever fields I want to add in, okay? Then I'll click next. And this final step is another big change in the most recent release. So uh, previously, you had to use a saved query to create your report, okay? So if I wanted to create a report, I gotta have a query first. And the query is just saying, hey, what data is included in my report? Remember, 
We just said earlier that a query is just asking a question of the database. Hey, what records look like this, right? Hey, what records have this, uh, you know, share this data, have these, that match this, excuse me, match this criteria? That's all the query is. It gives me raw data. Well, then I would use that query to, again, because I, I want to get insights into that. I don't just want to see all the records. So this is where I say I'm going to take that save query and I'm going to put a report on it so I can kind of summarize some of that data. If you don't have the query, you can click right here to create a new query, and then you can search for it and add it to your report, no problem. But now this is even easier, because I don't have to have a query at all, okay? I can go ahead and just add filters right to my report. Now, the big difference here between you know, the filter and the query, it's the same as the choice you make whenever you use a contact query instead of a contact filter. Queries allow for more complexity, right? Queries are gonna be more powerful. Queries are gonna allow for ORs. They're gonna allow me to nest in other queries and pull in data that might be from you know, disparate sections of the system and put it all together into one big query. My query is still gonna be that way. So if that's what I wanna do in my report, I'm gonna to wanna to build a query, okay? But I don't have to. Instead, I could just come in here and say, hey, let me go ahead and we'll look at um, all the gifts. We'll just, oh, we said year to date. So we'll do uh, gift date is greater than or equal to, go back to the beginning of the year, there we go. And maybe I don't wanna report on any negative transactions. I don't wanna see reversing transactions in here or anything like that. Um, I could also specify that amount designated is greater than zero. There we go. So I could just do those two, okay? And then I can click Save Report. And that's gonna go ahead and run that report and it's gonna save it for me. So my bar chart's a little out of control because I got a lot of projects with giving here. And underneath, I've got all the details for my report. Now, from here, if I wanted to download the actual table of data, everything in the results, I can do that. I've got a big blue button to download those results. That'll give me a CSV file with all the raw data. For the chart up at the top, maybe I want to pull that out. I want to put that into a report I'm putting together or something else. Well, you can download a PDF of just the chart right up at the top. You've got a blue button to download that PDF. So you've got two different download options for being able to take this data out of Virtuous and use it somewhere else, right? The chart will come out as a PDF, and then the results, the actual data that's underlying all of this, that'll export as a CSV. Now, the other cool thing is remember, I can go ahead and take this particular report, and I can go ahead and add it to my dashboard, okay? So once I've created this report, right from here, got a link right up at the top in the upper right, I can click on that and I can say, okay, I wanna take this thing, I wanna add it to my dashboard. So I click on add to dashboard, it says my report's been added to my dashboard, hunky-dory. Okay, so then over here, I go to my dashboard. This is probably gonna look pretty crazy, right? When it creates a widget out of this, because yeah, it's a big bar chart already and there it's kind of squeezed. Now, let's do something a little bit different. Let's do something pretty cool. So we talked about being able to share this with your team as well. This was a report that we built and we said is shared with the team. So it's publicly visible, right? Anybody can see this particular report. I can go back and edit this report. I can make whatever changes I want to it. You notice the only change I can't make is to share this or, or unshare this or something like that. I will say, not a bad thing though, right? If you wanted to create this report and then you realize, oh, it should have been private, well, you can copy the report and you can make the copy private. And you can also go the other direction. If you wanted to start with this being a private report and then you realize, oh, I should have shared it with the team, just copy it and share the copy with everybody, okay? You don't have to change anything else about it. It's a pretty straightforward way to do that, to flip back and forth. Uh, but now I've got a restricted user 
who wants to add that project giving year to date widget to their dashboard. When I say restricted user, this is someone who is raising their own support. So they are restricted to seeing only the contacts in their organization group, and they are restricted to seeing only the gifts made to projects that they own. This particular user owns about three projects. He's a great guy. We've brought him up in these webinars before. You know him, he's a great gift officer and or uh, uh, someone raises staff support, a missionary, he does a little bit of everything in the nonprofit space. It's one Mr. Fozzie Bear, here's Fozzie Bear. So I'm now in a different environment here. I'm logged in as, as, as privately here. I'm logged in as Fozzie Bear. I'm logged into the same database, right? Same exact database. But again, Fozzie is restricted. You can see he has fewer icons over here on the left. He can only see certain contacts. He can only see about 29. And when I go to the gifts screen, again, he only sees the gift splits because that's all he gets to see. And he's restricted. And even some of these are anonymous right in here. So Fozzie has a very pared down view of the database. Okay? But he's got his widgets on here. And he's going to go ahead and add a widget. And when you go to add a widget, this is the other way to get these reports on your dashboard, you're going to see in addition to all the widgets in the drop down, right up at the top, you can say custom report. He's going to select that widget. Once you do that, then the system will let you choose which report you're going to use to create this widget. Once you've made that selection, that's it. You can't keep like swapping from one report to another or something crazy like that. Um, but he's going to go in here and he's going to use that project giving year to date report that we just built. Remember, it had a ton of bars on it. It was almost hard to read for me as an admin because I can see everything. But when Fozzie adds that, it looks very different. He only has access to gifts to a couple of projects. So for him, his widget is just going to be based on the giving to his projects this year. Okay, so same report, right? Same thing, we're creating a widget from that same report there. For me, kind of bananas looking. For Fozzie, actually a little bit easier to use because he's only got a few projects. Once he's added this, he can come up here because you'll see the widget name is custom report, just like any of the widgets. Remember, just click on the, the widget name and he can change that. So he could say this is his uh, pro, oh gosh. You have to bear with me while I type even slower than usual here. There we go. That's his project giving year to date widget. Okay. So let's go back to our reports here. Now we've got another example of a report that I already built. Okay, this is this uh, gift report here for donors by year. This is a good example of a couple of the other uh, total or aggregation options, okay? So if I click on this donors by year report over here, you can see this gives me a breakdown of how many contacts have given in each you know, calendar year, Come back to 1998 apparently, um, and here's 2019 and drop off for 2020. We're hoping that year end is gonna make that up. And if I go to edit, this particular report, right? We picked a bar, a bar chart here. When I go to group fields, you're gonna see that we're um, grouping gifts by gift year. And here, instead of amount, this is where I did select contact, okay? And then for contact, the function that I'm using is called distinct. Now count and distinct do two very similar things, but they are uh, a different in practice. And I wanted to highlight these two in particular. I think the others, they, they all, you know, are pretty straightforward. But count is going to give you a raw count, okay, of how many contacts have given a gift. Well, the count of contacts is going to be equivalent to the count of gifts at the end of the day, because that's just going to count every contact for every gift, and contact to gift is one to one. Count distinct is how many unique contacts have made a gift, okay? So I might have 10 gifts, 
but they may have come from five contacts. We use small numbers here. Um, because each of those five contacts gave twice, right? So the count for contacts there would be 10, but the distinct for contacts in that scenario would be five, okay? If you select contacts in your building a gift report, you need to use distinct, okay? If I were to try to say average or I said count or any of these other ones and I said, let's go ahead and save this, it's gonna say, hey, you can't do that. Average count, they're not supported by that particular field. So there are some things that you can't do together and the report builder will let you know that right here. Hey, you can't use average, you can't use count. Okay, you're gonna to wanna to use distinct because again, count would just be a count of all the gifts and I already know that from my report. Okay, but that count distinct is really handy if you do want to be able to see those trends. You can use count distinct on other things too. So for example, count distinct on um, uh, uh, amount if you're doing recurring giving. So let's say that you wanted to go to a, uh, a more of a membership model or a sponsorship model for your uh, monthly giving program. And so you wanted to start to set giving tiers. And you were curious, well, well hey, what's the distribution of monthly gift amounts. We tend to ask for the same sorts of gifts over and over, so what's the distribution of you know, recurring gift amounts? Well, that's where you could build a recurring gift report, right? And when you go to group your fields, you could use amount and then you could do distinct, and that's gonna tell you how many unique values do you have for recurring gift amount, right? If it's, five, well, hey, great, we could probably consolidate this and really create tiers. If it's, you know, in the hundreds, whoa, okay, they're all over the map, okay? So a couple different ways that you can use some of those different aggregate functions to be able to create your reports. Okay, so we've got about 15 minutes remaining Okay. I wanted to run through some of that so you could get a good sense of what this looks like. Um, I do want to make sure that we can address some of the questions. I see questions coming in through that Q&A box. So let's go ahead and tackle some of these. So the first one here is, can a gift officer set gift split as a subcategory in his donor profile? Um, I'm not sure what you mean by a, a subcategory in the donor profile, um, but if you have a gift officer and they are going to be managing a portfolio of major givers, right, unless they're going to be restricted to only raising funds for a couple of specific projects, they would probably, and in most cases, be able to see both gifts and gift splits. So to go back to our earlier example of a $100 gift split to two different projects, they would see both the $100 and they would see the distribution there on that gift for the folks that they're working with, okay? All right, so we have another question here. If we don't choose a bar chart or a line chart, how should we be answering the X and Y axis? Okay. So I'm assuming we're talking about, hey, I want to go ahead and build a, uh, a pie chart. Oh, great. We've got to bring our mouse back. There we go. So, hey, I want to go ahead and build a, a pie chart. I want to see a breakdown there. Um, and what am I going to select for those values when I'm building out my pie chart? So let's say... Do, 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 do. We're going to build a pie chart, and let's say this is going to be um, average uh, giving, and let's say um, by state. Just pick one here. Okay, so for my pie chart, what do I want to group by, and then what do I want to aggregate by? Um, so here, let's say that I want to group all of this. So I said it's going to be giving by state, right? So I'm going to use state down here. So that's going to be what are the different wedges of my pie? What are the wedges going to be? Okay, that's going to be my X axis. So if you want to think about that pie chart being a big circle, what's on the outside of the circle? What labels would I see there? Then down here for my summarized or my Y axis, what are those pie wedges? using a technical term, 
going to represent, right? What are they going to be? Well, here I said it's average giving by state, so I'm gonna stay with, stay with average, and I'm gonna stay with gift amount, okay? And over here, if I were to just do gift ID, uh, gift date, and amount, just to pick a few, and let's say that we're gonna filter this, and this is only gonna be um, gifts from this year, so greater than or equal to, we'll stick with 2020 for right now, just to kind of put a cap on this, okay? And let's say that again, I want the um, amount to be greater than zero. I could save that report. That's gonna give me a very broken down pie chart there. Woo, I got a lot of states, okay? Um, but that's what that x-axis and y-axis is. So if you want to think about it as the outside of the pie, the outside of the circle, and then what those, those pie wedges or slices represent, that's going to be your x and y-axis for a report like that. Okay. Um, so we had a question here about toggling between sharing a report and not sharing it. Um, so we just talked about that, right? If I've got a report that I've set up as, as private or not private, and I, I want to I want to flip that. I realize I did it wrong the first time. Not a problem, right? I can just come in here and say, all right, I'm going to copy this average giving by type. And this is going to be um, average giving. My goodness. I tried to set up a webinar where I didn't do too much typing, but there you go. Um, and maybe I realized, oh, that should have been private. So I'll, I'll create that and copy that report. And that's it. All the other report data stays intact, right? But now I've got a private version of it instead of the version that I had that was shared. Okay. So here they are. Here's the first one and here's the copy. Might be a little bit small for you to see depending on your monitor, but right at the end here, you can see in italics, it tells me that particular report is private. So I know that that one is the private one. And I also know if I'm looking at my reports page that uh, other users are not going to see that. Okay, that one's mine. Okay. Uh, let's see. Man, we have a lot of questions. This is good. I like participation. Uh, when you add a report to your dashboard, will it automatically update with new data? Yes. So that will refresh hourly. Okay, the same way that your, um, your dashboard widgets are cached, so is the new report widget that you add. Okay, so those will be cached and those will update hourly. Can we sum gift amounts based on contacts organization group or tag? No, you can't. And the reason why is because you want to remember that tags and organization groups are not unique. A contact can have multiple organization groups and a contact can have multiple tags. So, being able to sum giving by one of those two is really not ideal. And I'll give you a great example of that, okay? So a lot of times I know, a lot of you probably track your major donors by tagging them as major donor. That's great, okay? And so you might say, hey, I wanna come in and I wanna build a report of all the giving, right, over the last couple of years uh, for everybody who's tagged as a major donor. Now, I can do that, right, to a degree, because I can build a filter or a query to identify only the contacts who have that major donor tag. Remember, the filter, the query, those set the parameters of my report, okay? So I'm not gonna see it broken down by tag, that's not gonna be one of the bars in my report, but I can absolutely use the filter, I can use the query, to say, I only want this group of contacts. Now, now, here's the other side of that, however. Once I build that report, that's gonna show me giving over the last three years for everybody who is tagged as a major donor right now, okay? Because that tag is binary. It's not, it's not based on any kind of time frame or anything like that. So, that particular uh, uh, report, right? I wanna get all the giving over the last couple of years for all the contacts tagged as major donor. Yes, I can build that report. I can do it right now. But the thing is, 
Again, the reporting on that is a little bit squidgy because last year, some of those contacts might not have been major donors, but they are now, okay? That's where the segment on your gift really comes into play, right? Because a segment stays with a gift. So if someone's in a particular donor segment, they're in the major donor segment, when that gift comes in, great. That tells me, hey, that was giving from major donors at that point in time, might have been two years ago. But then, right, uh, now if I build it off of a tag, again, I'm not really getting a clear picture. And then if you were to imagine that you built a bar chart that said, let me get all of the giving by tag, broken up by tag. Here's everybody who's a major donor. Here's everybody who's a recurring donor. Well, I have people who are major donors and recurring donors. They're going to be in both. And now I start double counting money, right? It gets really out of hand pretty quickly. So if you do want to build a report, yes, you can filter it based on the tag to, to get just that group of contacts and see their data, okay? You can absolutely do that. But keep in mind that when I'm reporting on a tag, I'm reporting on everybody who's tagged with that today, okay? Now, if I wanted to build a gift report and I wanted to group by segment, remember you can group by segment if you wanted to do that and see a little bit of a different view of things. And some of that you can even see through the standard reports built into the system like the campaign giving and the campaign summary reports. Okay. So when using reports or custom reports, are you able to pull online donation information that hasn't been uploaded into Virtuous? We're looking at Giving Tuesday, being able to provide updated totals raised throughout the day. 100%. Okay, now that's not gonna be a custom report. Okay, you wanna remember that's gonna be a dashboard report. I haven't imported any data today, so I can run this, but it's, it's gonna look pretty empty. Uh, we'll see. But remember that there is the real-time giving report, which is exactly what it says, real-time giving. Okay, so if I run that report, I can run it for a particular campaign. So if I wanted to run it for just my Giving Tuesday campaign, if I wanted to focus on just a particular form, I could focus on a particular form, or I could run it for just everything that's happening today if I wanted to see that. And that's gonna give me, oh, look at that. I do have one gift that I put in through reversing transaction. That's a good look. That's gonna give me a breakdown at the top of giving by hour. Okay, so I did that at seven o'clock this morning. That was about it. It'll give me the breakdown of giving by hour, everything that's going on today. Okay, and you'll see it's coded. So one-time gifts, recurring gifts, pledges, you'll see the breakdown for all three. And then you're gonna see a breakdown here for gifts and for pledges. You're gonna see what's called unreconciled. Unreconciled meaning it hasn't been imported yet, right? It's a pending transaction. Someone went on your website, they made a gift. It won't even appear in the import tool until tomorrow, okay? But, I can still see that and report on it to know, like you said, everybody on December 1st is going to be staring at this going, how are we doing today? Okay. So I can see unreconciled and processed. Anything that's been processed today. Processed meaning I imported it today. Now the thing to bear in mind is that means if you're looking at this to keep an eye on Giving Tuesday stats and your gift processing team is importing checks for the day, these processed gifts, they're going to have all those checks that they're keying in. Okay, that's everything that I've imported today. Okay, so I've got everything that's processed and imported, and then I've got everything that's unreconciled. And same thing for my pledges. But that real-time giving report is what you'd want to use to keep an eye on that. Okay, so we had someone else ask about Giving Tuesday. Um, so that's a good example of how you can use Virtuous when it is the big day on Giving Tuesday. And I know this was in the release communication as well, but just to highlight too, up here in the menu, you may have noticed the little Giving Tuesday icon that actually takes you to a series of links with some other resources. So here's just the basic information about Giving Tuesday if you're not that familiar. We've got some sample email templates that you can use. Right, there's a whole resource center put together by our partner Classy, and also some great tips from another one of our partners, Raise Donors. Um, there's a link to the report on multi-channel and why multi-channel matters. 
I think for Giving Tuesday in particular, people tend to think online, 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 right? But multi-channel donors overall tend to be more valuable to your organization. You can also check out any of the recordings from the nonprofit, uh, Responsive Nonprofit Summit that happened just a couple weeks ago, actually. And you can always join the Virtuous community on Slack if you want to share some tips or get ideas from other folks at other nonprofits out there. Um, you can hang out, you can share ideas and everything on that. Okay, uh, so we had another question here on getting stats on custom created zones or areas. Uh, and I'll say that sounds like something you might need to talk to your customer success coach about or at least to, uh, uh, you know, if you do, if you're, if you have some training coming up, you can talk to them. If you want to reach out to the support team, you can start there. Um, because custom created zones or areas sounds like something that's pretty specific or mission critical to your organization. Um, if that means organization groups, if it means uh, custom fields, if it means tags, if it's custom collections, there's a lot of different ways to be able to put data together. And so that sounds like something they'd be able to consult with you a little bit more one-on-one -on -one about, right? And remember, outside of all these custom reports, just like we saw with the real-time giving report, there are standard reports built in too for things like the organization group report and things like that. So don't forget about those bad boys. They're hanging out here already, right? And they're still pretty darn good. Okay. So I think we got to all the questions there. I saw a couple people put some things in on chat, but I think a lot of those came in all in the Q&A as well. Um, so I think we got everything addressed, but we are right at time and I don't wanna keep everybody for too long here. Um, but I do wanna remind everybody, uh, we do have this every month, right? On the third Thursday of every month. And next month, this is an annual tradition at this point. We're going to have our gift processing and rec receiving extravaganza, right? It's the busiest time of the year. Everybody's processing a lot more volume of gifts. You're sending out a lot more receipts. And at the same time, you know, those of you who are prepared, you know, thinking ahead, you've got one eye on January when you're going to have to send out all those annual giving statements. So we'll talk about a couple of tips and tricks, a couple things to look out for to make gift processing as easy as possible. And we'll also look at receiving, and in particular, start talking about how you can put together those year-end statements and send those through Virtuous. We wanna get you ready for January as well. So please do make sure that you join us. You can sign up for that on the support page, go to the webinar section, make sure you've got your seat put aside for that. And as usual, right, I want to make sure I leave you with some uh, intelligent thoughts from someone much smarter than me. And I've, this has always been one of my favorite quotes, especially when we talk about reporting. It makes the most sense. In God we trust, all others must bring data. Okay. All right. Thank you, everybody, for joining me today. Right, The recording will be up tomorrow if you do want to go back and watch this or share it with your team. So keep an eye out for that. And again, for those of you here uh, stateside, have a happy Thanksgiving. Bye, everybody.